Denise. How are you doing? Hello. Oh, I'm good. Yeah. How are you? I'm fine. The sun is shining and it's Sunday, so uh, I was able to sleep longer than uh, the the normal during tomorrow is another another Monday, so I need to wake up and go to work and usual life, almost usual life. <laughs> Um, it's nice that you have sun over there. Over here, it's um dark and cloudy today. Okay, where are you located in Tampere? Yes. Yeah. 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 So not that far because I'm in uh, Ulvila, close to Pori. But yeah, that's actually quite close. It's like what an hour by car or something. I think. About. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's one hour more or less. Yeah. Pretty much. But yeah, so but you are original, originally from the Netherlands, am I right? Yes, yes, that's correct. Yes. So how and did I'm you very happy that you said the Netherlands actually, because everyone always says Holland, and I'm not from Holland, so. Yeah, yeah, you know, I remember when uh, at school uh, back in back in the days, we were learning uh, geography and. Uh, is the right term in English geography? Maybe it is. Yeah, so it was always that uh, all at the beginning was like talking about Holland, and then it was, uh, but the real name is not Holland because it's just a part of that. Exactly. So, <laughs> and then it yeah, was. Yeah, it's good that they taught you. <laughs> yeah, and that then uh, it's uh, in Italian is Paesi Bassi. That we told ah, we, like we the talked French, about actually. Netherlands. Yeah. So that's uh, that's something that then stayed in my mind, and uh, I don't know if in Finland uh, is used another word because everybody talk about uh, Olanti, but yeah, there is actually it's a uh, Alankomat, uh, which means literally oh, the yeah. Netherlands, but but it's 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 not used as often. And I think it's also more complicated because it's plural, so it's uh, it's harder to use in sentences and everything. Yeah, but how did you end up in Finland? Um, so I had this band that I followed everywhere for gigs, uh, Sonata Arctica, and um, um, I went to see them here in I think it was 2012 for five gigs in a row. They were doing like three gigs in Tavia. Tavastia in Helsinki and then one in Tampere, Pakahuone and um, the last one was in Lahti and um, so I decided with a German friend of mine that we should go see them and we did and um, so there was quite a bit of traveling also involved and uh, we were sitting on the train and I just looked outside and I was like oh it's so beautiful here there's like lakes everywhere trees there's lots of nature still um, which I missed a little bit in the Netherlands. And uh, I kind of fell in love with that. And of course the music as well, but it's mostly actually the nature that I moved moved here for. Yeah, yeah. You know, Sonata Artica was also for me, like with Nightwish and Stratovarius, the first band that really got me into Finland. Even if I didn't <laughs> came to Finland to see any of their gigs, but uh, yeah, Sonata Artica is still for me a, one of the most important band. Uh, I have Sonata Artica and Stamina are the one that uh, that still keep me like uh, I don't know. They are still maybe my favorite bands if I can say like this. Even if I, nowadays maybe I listen to other bands and other other channels more but still every time that i saw them live i'm so happy and i find myself enjoying really much the, 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 their live show yeah i think that those bands they stay with you forever like i also do not listen to them as often as i used to anymore because that was basically all day long um and I found a lot of other bands here in Finland, especially as well. Um, but yeah, they, they stay with you and I still go see their gigs and I still buy their new album. So um, just got the new album, haven't listened to it yet. And we'll do it tonight. And I'm very excited to hear it. And then next week on Saturday, there will be a gig here in Tampere to see them. So 
Yeah, and you are lucky because in Tampere there are a lot of gigs compared to yes. story that uh, for bands that are, uh, let's say, medium big bands, there is not much going on. on smaller band, yes, there is uh, every oh, this month a bit more, but usually one gig per month uh, at least. Uh, so something is happening, but not that much as in Tampere. And I love no, Tampere. yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy here and there's so many venues nowadays. We we have a lot of new ones or, or ones that ha are being used more nowadays. So it's sometimes it's really hard to decide where to go to because there's so many gigs happening at the same time that you might want to see all of them. And yeah, you just can't, unfortunately. Yeah, you cannot clonate yourself uh, and be at the same time. I wish place. I could sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, let's talk about uh, your black heart designs. So tell us more about about it. Um, so uh, I think it started um, in probably 2013 or 14. I think I still lived in the Netherlands at that point. And um, um, I was I was just I had to start a business because I was helping my um, my boss out I was um making gymnastic leotards and stuff like that hey. and I need to do it freelance so I had to open a business and um I decided to keep that and um start making band shirts as well because I used to do that for fun and I had friends asking me if I uh, want to make a band shirt for them as well and um I think that's how it started and just try to get more and more orders and um, when I moved to Finland, it basically was the only option to to start a business because uh, the language is so difficult and um, I didn't uh, have enough knowledge of it to start any uh, start any job anywhere else. So it was it was my only option to move here. So I decided to just risk it and um, put everything in my car and drove to Finland with a friend and stayed here. Okay. And um, well, I uh, nowadays try to get some more different bands because it started with a lot of Sonata Arctica shirts because everyone that I knew was also into that band so I had to do a lot of those but it's uh it's quite hard to expand I have to say because people think you can only do band shirts for one or two bands and nobody ever realizes that it's very easy to flip up the designs and the bands and just make shirts of any band or any print that you want actually I mean I could do also make a uh, I could alter any shirt. It doesn't matter, really. Yeah. So here is a call out to everyone. If you have any cool shirts or any cool prints that you want to have made in a different uh, design that fits your sizes, then contact me, please. Yeah. And they are really nice because you put a lot of uh, de details on uh, on what you do. And uh, they are also different because uh, if people go and watch your uh, Facebook or Instagram, they can find all everything that you have done, or I think almost everything, maybe. Yeah, there's there's some things that um that are harder to photograph if it's bigger sizes or something. I only have one dress form in a smaller size, so if the shirts are uh, uh for for plus size, it's a bit harder to photograph, and it just doesn't look as good on pictures. So those. I don't always post, but I take pictures of everything. I want to have my whole laptop full of pictures of everything I ever made. Yeah. And how how much time does it take to to create a new design and uh, cut and uh, cut uh, cut and uh, war and shoot? Oh, is the word to it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yes. Yeah. Um. Oh, it's a bit hard to say. I, I usually make different designs for everything. So I, I don't ever or almost never do a repeat design. I could, but I never get requested to do it. So um, I make patterns specific to a person's size. So that takes a little bit, um, like, let's say two hours or something to create a pattern for a, a specific person. Um, and then first I have to take the shirt apart, which also takes a little bit of time. Um, just I, I don't want to waste any fabric so I have to take all the threads out just so I afterwards have the full uh, fabric 
flat on my table and then iron it so I can cut into it. So um, uh, I say that takes about half an hour to take a shirt apart. Um, and then uh, depends on the design, how much time it takes to make it, but I would say it's uh, usually about uh, eight hours or something, maybe about. I never really clocked it that uh, that much, yeah. how many hours it takes. But it, it's a lot of work, but um, I really enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. And um, you told before that uh, you were uh, doing, uh, you were making a uh, uh, gymnastic leotard. And, uh, you know, mm -hmm. um, I'm a former gymnast and uh, I'm still coaching coach coaching gymnastic so it, it's interesting that you were doing those leotards uh how difficult is to do a gymnastic leotard oh uh, well honestly my boss the, the the pattern drafting and cutting and everything so basically all i had to do was uh, uh pin the decoration on top and all the little studs and everything like little shiny studs um, it wasn't that hard. There's, there's, let me think, one, two, three, I think there's four seams that you have to sew. So two side seams, uh, the crotch seam and the shoulder seams. And that's about it. And then you just put elastic everywhere around. And it's, yeah. it's, it's not that difficult. I think uh, the hardest part of it was um, to put all the decoration, like little shapes and everything on the bodies and, um, and then uh, use uh, tweezers to put the little, shiny decoration on top and then be very careful with the iron that you do not touch the fabric but just the little little thingies on top what are they called um hot fix studs i think yeah. uh, they're called yeah so so those were used a lot um it was um quite detail oriented work but um it was a, a good thing to learn it and um I think working with those elastics, like those knit fabrics, that, that helped me a lot to to learn how to work with the clothes I make now because um, I only work usually with knit work. It's always a little bit stretchy. Um, yeah. And um, it's a different way of working with fabrics than uh, with, the, with the woven fabrics. It's a lot different. Also, uh, making the patterns for it is, is quite different. Um, when you make clothes... Uh, for woven fabrics, you make them always a little bit bigger than the actual sizes are. And with stretch fabric, you have to make them a little bit smaller and you have to know how much smaller in order to make it like fit. And um, especially if you want to have it fit skin tight, then it's very precise, of course. Every millimeter counts, basically. Yeah. And uh, talking about those clothes that you, you are doing, uh, how much... Uh, cost more or less of course it depends on the on, on what mm. kind of uh, if if it's a dress if it's a t-shirt or whatever it is but uh, more or less what is the, the the price range um so yeah i have usually um uh, a range like a shirt would be around 100 euros and um that would be uh, without the actual band shirt so I usually let either people order them themselves or I order and I add them on top of the invoice. Um, or if they have an old shirt, of course, uh, they can send it over. Um, dresses are a bit more expensive um, because obviously um, more fabric is used. It's not usually that, is that much more extra work, but it just you use up a lot more fabric, especially if you have like these uh, white skirts. Um, uh, so dresses would be around 150 euros up to 200 I would say depending on how many details you want um, and then I also make bags sometimes and those are a bit more expensive still because um, they have a lot of details there's lots of pockets in the inside and outside so it's just a lot of hours to make those yeah but you get something that is uh, completely unique because uh, you can never reproduce it exactly the same anyway so yeah and you know sometimes people think that uh, yeah if you do the the clothes by yourself it's going to be cheaper but it's uh, it's uh, not if we think about the fabrics if someone goes to see <laughs> the fabrics pr price it's not cheap and then you have the work that you do uh, on, on it so it's uh, it's something unique 
is something that you know the quality that you are going to have if you are doing by yourself and i wish i was able to do clothes but the reality is that i'm a disaster and uh, i don't know how to do those things <laughs> But I, I have respect for all the people that are able to create uh, uh, clothes because it's something it's something beautiful to to be able to do. Yeah, it's really nice that you can also do something that uh, make something that nobody else um, will wear. Um, and um, I started doing it for fun for myself at first because I was a smaller sized person and. Um, at that time, I think there was mostly like shirts in large and extra large, and they were like dresses on me. So I uh, was more, it started uh, out of necessity, I think, and then it became fun. Yeah. And um, yeah. And uh, yeah, talking about the prices of everything here, it's very expensive, of course. I, I usually don't buy fabrics here in Finland uh, because they're so much more expensive. Even if you buy wholesale, it's still more expensive than if I would go to the Netherlands and go to a fabrics market there and buy them. Yeah. Um, so that's what I usually do when I visit my family in the Netherlands. I make sure I have enough room in my suitcase to bring uh, eight or 10 meters of fabric back home. Yeah, yeah. How, how often do you go to the Netherlands? Um, Usually about two or three times a year. Yeah, that's or at least I try to do that. Of course, when COVID was happening, uh, there was zero visits, but um, everyone knows about that. Um, so I try to catch up with that. And so the, the years after I went like three times and um, I think now I'm calming down a little bit. So twice a year again, probably. Yeah. How many orders do you have uh, usually, let's say, per month? Oh, I have no idea. It really depends. Um, so you would think that Christmas season would be very busy, but I hardly ever get any orders around that time. But right now I have uh, sh shitloads to do, actually. So, um, um, yeah, I have uh, I have quite a nice waiting list at the moment. I think I have 10 orders like lying around now waiting to be done. Uh, but of course, there's it's not always like uh, uh, long ones. Uh, some some are like just uh, like please fix this shirt, put a little logo on it from this band. So that was the last one I did was basically take two shirts apart, put their prints on a basic shirt that was almost ready made already. And those are faster. And then there's the ones that say, um, do whatever you want. I just want no sleeves and I, I want a V-neck or something. And those are the most fun ones. Um, sometimes it takes much longer to make those because, well, you're not always uh, inspired at the same time so sometimes I do the easy jobs and in the meantime I think about uh, what I'm going to do with yeah. with the more complicated ones yeah yeah and if you ever um, collaborate with any band um so I have made pants for a use so from Battle Beast once a long time ago and um i made uh little alterations to uh, a vest and a t-shirt for anton from beast in black and that's about it actually i would love to do more i tried to get the lord of the lost blood and glitter uh one but i didn't someone else got it and did a really great job on that one but yeah i would love to do something like that because those are um yeah they, they have a different style that i really like would be awesome because you could basically do anything for them and it would be into yeah. it i think you could go very crazy with that yeah well let's hope that some band will contact you and you will have yes. the opportunity to do something bigger and yeah uh, i would really like that with... also small bands i mean that would be awesome too or a little collaboration for um uh, like um uh, do for smaller bands they send me in a shirt and we can basically put it up for a lottery or something that some fan could win it I, I think that would be really cool to do as well yeah yeah so everybody if you're watching this contact there if you want to collaborate because yes please it would be super cool it's 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 go and check out our, our Facebook and Instagram because they are really good but yeah Let's talk about metal in general now. Yes. So, uh, when did you start to listen to metal music? 
Um, so I think I was around 2000, uh, no, what's say I was, I was 14, so not 2014, obviously. Um, uh, it was um, around 1994. Um, so everyone who is a smart and fast calculator uh, knows how old I am now. Um, but yeah, 14, I had some friends in my uh, uh, local village and, um, um, and they listened to Megadeth and uh, yeah, all, all, all uh, other kinds of bands but yeah that one stuck with me um so at some point i went to the store and, and bought my first metal album and it was euthanasia from megadeth and that's basically how i remember which year it was because like when did the album come out oh okay that's a long time ago already yeah and uh, what's your favorite band? do you have a favorite band well, I actually have quite a few, but I was trying to come up with like my absolute favorite and I still have to choose two, uh, which would be Arian, uh, not exactly a band, it's a project, um, but that one definitely and Amorphous. Yeah. So those two, those are my absolute favorites. And then there's a lot of others that are just below that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious to know, oh. How is uh, the metal scene in the Netherlands? Um, it used to be non-existent, but I think uh, at some point we got quite a few good metal bands, like more symphonic, I think, more female-fronted bands. So we have like Within Temptation and The Lane and Epica. Uh, what else is there? Uh, it started with The Gathering, I think. Um, uh yeah, I think those are the first few that come to mind. Obviously, Arian, my favorite one, yeah. um, which has a lot of the singers from the bands that I just mentioned in there. So it's a project that um, picks uh, different artists from different bands and they sing on on sometimes on more than one album. And um, yeah, I really love it. It's uh, usually concept albums and um, has a little bit of science fiction theme, which I like a lot. So, yeah. Yeah. And what is, in your opinion, the best metal album or the one that you feel most? Uh, also a really difficult question because sometimes you listen more to this and sometimes more to that. So I, I wrote down a few. I have a 01011001 from Arian. Um, I just saw that recently live. And um, that was really good. So that one uh, is definitely one of my favorites. And then uh, Slash with Miles Kennedy and the Conspirators, Living the Dream. Um, and Under the Red Cloud from Amorphous. Yeah, yeah. And there's probably a lot that I will remember after this that I'm like, oh shit, I should have mentioned these two, but. Yeah, well, you know, every time when I ask uh, the reason if best album or favorite album, it's it's really difficult to to choose because there are so many and um, during a personal life uh, you are listening to so many uh, albums and uh, different kind of music that it's not not that easy to to choose just one because the no, it's not. every every phase of your life has its own so yeah yeah, and also every phase of your life, you know, there, there's there's memories when you hear those songs again. They, like you remember exactly where you were at that point when you were listening to that album a lot. Yeah. What are you listening at the moment? What are the, the bands that or the kind of music that you are into right now? Um, so I have um listened a lot to Tormion Ketila recently. Um I sometimes write reviews for a for an online magazine, and um, I usually prepare quite well before I go see a gig of a band that I don't know that well. So I know that in March I'm gonna see so, uh, see Tormion Ketilet, so I want to listen to more of their older albums. Um, and of course, uh, tonight I'm gonna listen to the new Sonata Arctica album. Um, what else? I actually made a playlist of all the good songs. Uh, that I really like at the moment. So it's really uh, very mixed, but uh, most of it is rock and metal. Yeah. With some exceptions, some Lady Gaga in there as well. Yeah, yeah. 
And you just told me that you are uh, collaborating with a website. So yeah, tell more. Um, about... um, so it's called Grim Gent, and I think it's located in Belgium because Gent is located in Belgium. Um, and um, a, a friend of mine who was also on your uh, podcast, Anna, she photographs for them and they were still looking for people to review gigs, uh, albums and whatnot. And um, so once a month I uh, I go to a gig and uh, review it for that. I'm still very new to it. It takes me forever to write it up, but it's a really good way to discover different bands that I don't know that well. And um, that would otherwise be too expensive to go to all these gigs. Um, I can go see them for free as long as I write a, a review about it. Um, and yeah, it's nice to to get to know different bands also from here. The like the Finnish uh, spoken or how do you say the like bands with uh, with Finnish lyrics. It's yeah. a bit more complicated for me, but um, so I would not really go to their gigs otherwise. But now I I do and um, discover some really good music that way. Yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, what else can I say? It's a it's a very cool magazine. They have writers um uh, in lots of places in the world, I think. So it's not just Belgium and Finland, but I think they have some people in the United States and UK as well. And everyone goes to gigs and writes about it. So it's uh, quite diverse. Yeah, yeah. That's nice. Uh, I also about, you know, this is my project, this metal pizza mm -hmm. is something different. Uh, but uh, I collaborate with two websites, uh, so I'm going to the gigs, uh, I do interviews, I, I take photos. Uh, sometimes I do reviews, but I'm not a big fan of doing reviews. Um, I mean, uh, Why? I don't know, at the beginning it was like more easy to do reviews than interviews, but mm -hmm. then... Uh, it changed and I find uh, more easy to do interviews, even if my English is not perfect, but I don't care anymore. I take oh, it doesn't matter anyway. as, as it comes, so whatever. But uh, when it comes to reviews, I maybe when I'm listening, I, I have those ideas on what I could write. And then when I have to write, I, I don't have those ideas anymore even if i write i wrote something it's like uh, i can how i can put this down nicely in the way that i want and then sometimes there are those albums that are not working for me and mm -hmm. uh, i feel bad to if i if i have to write that that is not a good album because when when you do the the review um you know it's also about your opinion it's not a black black and white and uh, then i think uh, they are good anyway compared to me that i don't have a band i'm not playing mm -hmm. so it's uh, it's a bit tricky for me so you sh I think uh, for review for you should be more uh, have, have, have more balls let's say <laughs> oh yeah I, I I understand that so well um I, I have trouble with this as well that like um how do you um what happens if you don't like a gig or anything then again you're you have to be honest what you feel about it, even though it's maybe not everyone's opinion. It's your opinion still. Um, and I think especially if you do uh, uh, reviews for albums or something, then you should really give your true opinion because people yeah. are reading that and maybe buy an album based on it. Now, if you're a negative about it, of course, that, that might sway them to not buy it. But also... They might be interested, like, oh, she says this is shit. Okay, now I'm gonna listen to it and and maybe discover they will like it. I mean, yeah, yeah. But then it's uh, you know, maybe it's more the difficult to to write. I don't know. Maybe because English is not my native language, so it's it's maybe a bit more tricky to to write as I would like to. I don't know. I I have to do now two reviews this month, 
and uh, let's see it's been a while since last review so so let's see how it's going to be <laughs> but uh, yeah but you're never nervous if you do an interview because uh, I, I think I would like to do it but I would be too nervous to to interview any band um at the beginning it was uh, really str I was so stressed every time and I have all, always you know a piece of paper with me mm. reading with all the the wall question wrote and I was reading and uh, now it's uh, yeah I just before going to the gigs and doing the interview I just check about what's about what's going on with the band if I don't know uh, and then I try to remember everything sometimes if if I for example in the in fest in the festivals there are more interviews so I mm -hmm. have to to prepare some paper with just uh, some keywords so mm -hmm. I remember what I'm going to ask to them um mm -hmm. If there is a bigger artist uh, or someone that is a uh, uh, native English speaker, then I feel more nervous. Uh, but with a Finnish band, generally, I don't feel nervous anymore. Uh, and th then it depends how, you know, when you meet the person, how they are. Mm. Um, yeah, of course. Most of the time, they the the person that I met and interview are super nice and uh, you feel comfortable so then then it's it's nice to have a chat um, then bigger bands sometimes the, the manager say you have uh, ten minutes or fifteen minutes to do the interview and that's it and so you are like uh, stressing uh, watching the time and and so on uh, but. Yeah, I will say that I, I was nervous with uh, Nightwish. Mm. Almost two years. Who did you get to interview from Nightwish? Um, Thomas and Kai. So okay. in the same room, there was the manager. And uh, uh, I had the, the clock. So I was watching the clock because we had 15 minutes. And uh, yeah, I was... You know, Nightwish is a big band, uh, and uh, it's been a big band for me. Uh, mm. So, it, it it was something that I was like stressing: uh, Am I good enough? And then uh, knowing that you are going to interview Nightwish, and when you put on YouTube, you know that a, a lot of people are going to watch it. So people are going to criticize uh, what you do. Uh, your English, uh, the way you ask, the way you are, and so that that uh, that is something that a bit, uh, you know, was like bothering me, but uh, yeah, it went well, and uh, I was comfortable after after all. So it was before it stressing, and then I was after. Oh, was it good enough? Maybe, maybe, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> so yeah but still <clears throat> sorry it's still something you did I mean that alone should make you proud that you yeah just did it yeah and I think with time you know at the beginning my English was uh, even worse than what it that what it is now and uh, I improved and I think that with time you improve all the all, all the time you know it's a, a ongoing process uh, and uh, then mm. you learn to improvise with the question with uh, what you are talking you learn to pick what a person are, is saying you need to listen of course not uh, to be <laughs> in your words so you need to be there and uh, concentrate on what the person is talking about so it's um, it's uh, yeah that is something I think like when you're really nervous then it's really hard to listen to what someone is someone is saying because like there's thoughts going through your head and all I think that would, would be where I would fail and I oh, completely forgot what they said and now I don't have a follow-up question anymore and yeah, yeah. so and yeah sometimes I, I, would like sometimes to do I have uh, 
those moments that I have something uh, when the, when they are talking, then, oh, this I should ask. And then they are talking more for more time. And then that thing go away. And then, oh, I had something in my mind, but now it's gone. Well, whatever, let's go ahead and uh, talk about something else. But yeah, sometimes it happened. And well, I, I like to make it uh, as... Uh, as much normal and comfortable for both or if there is other wall band for everybody so mm. it's not that it's like yeah let's let's do this and i'm like no i i like to to make everyone comfortable if it's possible and i mm. see the difference compared to the interviews that i did mm. uh, compared to the one that i i'm doing now it's i feel myself different when i watch the video and uh, i see also that the other the others are comfortable comfortable with themselves yeah of course you improve when you practice yeah. a lot yeah true if i if i look at the old stuff i made like the first couple of shirts i did i'm like oh um <clears throat> yeah not very happy with those either anymore so yeah you just improve and then you your your level of what you tolerate for yourself gets higher as well i think that's true that's true yeah. And you know, when you were saying about uh, your t shirt, then what you did in the past uh, is quite different from what you are doing now. And uh, it, you see it with different eyes. And uh, I think it's part of, um, of every, in particular, when, uh, when it's kind of arti something artistic or uh, creative. Uh, then you you see the the, the improvement uh, always and um, for example with photography i when i look back to the photos that i thought were good back in time i'm like oh no those are really bad they are really bad and i'm um, i'm quite critical with my my photos and um, i mean I improved a lot and still I have to improve because it's a never ending uh, process of, mm -hmm. of learning and about everything, whatever you do. Uh, if you think that you know everything, that you are perfect, then you should change what you are doing. That's, uh, that's uh, something yeah. someone told me many years ago. If you think that you know everything, then you have to change. You cannot do any more this. Yeah, I think you never know any everything. I mean, there's always things to learn. And nothing will ever be perfect. You just you strive for it, but it will never be like that. But that's why I keep going, I think, yeah. also. Yeah. So that's... Uh, I, I really like to go to the uh, concert and take photos but sometimes you know when it comes when you go to a gigs and uh, you do the the review uh it's different from when you take photos when you you have to do a review or a, a review of the gigs uh you concentrate on uh, what's going on on the stage mm. and the listening and when you are taking the photo you are not that much listening to what what they are playing because you are concentrating of um when is the right moment to 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 snap mm -hmm. so it's quite different uh, also i'm not able anymore to enjoy a concert like like i was before uh, if I don't have my camera, I feel a bit lost, <laughs> and it's a, it's something weird. But uh, I realize that uh, yeah, I feel a bit lost, and I I am not able to to be one hundred percent like if you think uh, uh, before I start doing uh, those uh, photography things for the web science. So it's it's crazy how the thing changed. How do you feel about yes. those uh, gigs? If you compare when you when you went to see 
uh, a gig just by yourself because you like the band and so on. And now that you are going to to work, let's say. Um, so I always prepare better, I think, because I want to know the songs. Um, now, I always did that a little bit because I, I prefer to at least know the songs a little bit when I go to a gig, I just enjoy them more. Um, but um, yeah, I listen a, mo a lot more closely to the music beforehand. And then when I go there, I have my phone out constantly because I'm taking notes because I'm afraid I will forget something otherwise. And I mean, I haven't written that many reviews yet, so I think that might still change. But for now, I'm just having my phone out constantly and making notes. Um, and I always wonder, like, because I try to get very close to the stage and I wonder, like, if there's band members looking down at this girl that's on the phone the whole time, they might be annoyed, but I'm actually really trying to write everything down that happens. And then, uh, yeah, so I'm actually watching very closely instead of yeah. uh, what people might think. Um, but yeah, so... I do enjoy those gigs, but not as much as when I just go there for fun. Yeah. Because yeah. I don't have to like watch every little thing that happens on the stage. <clears throat> I can go crazy when there's a good song and headbang and hurt my neck. And um, yeah, I think that's the best way to enjoy a show <laughs> anyway. Yeah. What's the best uh, concert that you have ever attended? That's a really, really difficult question. There's there's quite a few that I really enjoyed. I think I'm going to drop uh, Arian again and say that um, I've seen three of their gigs. <clears throat> the first one was probably the most special one because I never thought that I would ever see any of those songs played live because it's a project, so you would not normally expect them to do that. And they play one of my favorite songs there, so that was an extra bonus. Um, but then they played uh, the next time they played like one full album, a double album. They played it in full and that was really good. And last year they did the same for a different album, which is my favorite of theirs, I think. And um, yeah, that was a really special show, too. So those three are definitely high on the list. But um, I also really love to see Slash in Stockholm in Sweden. That was a great gig as well. Um, oh, there's too many. I can't remember yeah, all of them. Yeah. There's, I have seen so many gigs that I really, really enjoyed and uh, gave me energy for months on end afterwards. Uh, yeah, I think that's the. If they do that, then it's a very successful gig. Yeah, true, true. And there is any any band that you discover going to see a gig and you were like, "Well, why I didn't know about this band." Um. I'm trying to remember. Um, uh, this is a difficult question. I think um, uh, Sonata Arctica had, uh, with their last tour, they had Luna Kills with them. And uh, I had never heard of them. I I hadn't even, I didn't listen to them beforehand, um, but I really enjoyed the energy. The singer is amazing. She's really, she has a really good stage presence. She can sing really well. I, I really enjoyed them. So that's a new band that, or new for me at least, that, that I really enjoyed watching. Um, apart from that, I'm trying to remember. Oh, um, I think Powerwolf, actually. Powerwolf was in as a support band, I think, for Sabaton many years ago. And um, yeah, I really enjoyed them and started listening to them afterwards. So that one as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there might be plenty more I just can't yeah, remember at yeah. the moment yeah it's always nice to you know discover a band and just like wow I didn't know about this band and then you start to listen and and yeah yes. the there are few I sometimes here there are more like underground bands or a smaller band that are mm. coming to play uh it's uh it's nice to see those bands because sometimes you go to listen and yeah it sounds okay but then when the live is even better than the album the record album yeah that's uh, that's one of the best thing ever when you see the band that has this uh, energy on the stage that is next level 
and uh, yeah i i'm always uh, like so so happy when uh, when when i see one of those bands and yeah okay now i want to see this band more i need to <laughs> Yes, and then you buy tickets for more gigs and more gigs, and soon yeah. your whole life is about gigs. <laughs> I wish I had the opportunity to go to more gigs, and but yeah, step by step, maybe one day yeah. I will have more. Money. Maybe move to Tampere <laughs> three times, and and then I will be every every day to a gig. That will be like a dream. <laughs> Oh no! I think at that point I would no, I wouldn't have be able to do that anymore. Like I think two or three nights in a row that's about the max I can do nowadays. Yeah, because you but... never. I mean, it always takes a while to get there and go to the gig, and then it's late in the evening. You still have to go home, and the next day I do it all over again, and also work in between. Like it's not doable for that long. Yeah, yeah. Win the lottery, then maybe. Yeah, yeah. Also, I thought that how cool it would be to get uh, on a tour with a band, whatever the band. I don't, I don't really care who is the band, <laughs> but just to to see how is. I know it's not easy. It's it's not easy be, being on tour, uh, but it will be like nice to to just be there. But I I I always hear that it's very boring most of the day there's a lot of waiting a lot of traveling and um, only for those couple hours that you're actually on the stage and the rest is not as fun and not as romantic as people make it out to be so yeah, yeah I, I don't but think actually, you know um the image that maybe people have uh, about the backstage for example the backstage is nothing great not at all even at uh, sometimes but most of the times not no yeah it's you know what the band do after after the show they just try to cool down so taking the clothes off if they can go to the shower having some drinks probably they have and to food. do interviews and then maybe meet some fans and yeah that's it it's over yeah <laughs> so it's uh, also you know during the festivals um, maybe people think so that in the backstage there is all amazing things but you know the band in the backstage just eat and they just rela relax before the, the the show and after the show mm. maybe they chat with other artists but yeah i guess that's how all these uh, side projects are born because people sit in the backstage and have nothing else to do so they start coming up with new ideas for music yeah you know uh th there is a festival that i'm always in the backstage every every year because i'm going to do the the interviews and um, so i'm part of the <laughs> i'm part of i'm part of the festival if, even if i'm an outsider so I'm not part of the festival, but it's like if I would be, yeah, <laughs> if it makes sense. And um, yeah, so I also just sit there with my camera and yeah, wait for the moment that I'm going to take photos and running around. And then I go to sit and drink a bit of water. And yeah, that's, that's pretty much what happened in the backstage. <laughs> Sometimes Super exciting. Yeah, sometimes talking with uh, other photographers and um, mm. sometimes if there is any artist that I know, having a chat, if if they have the time, because I'm not going to to annoy anyone. <laughs> so I'm there like, say hi, and then if they come and we chat, good. If not, I, I'm not going to bother anyone. <laughs> mm. But uh, yeah, pretty much is different from what maybe people think yeah yeah i think so like there's all these romantic images about tour life and festivals and whatnot but it's 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 just any other job i guess yeah yeah and everything at some point becomes well maybe not specifically boring but just basic life yeah. when you do it day in day out true that's true
But let's get to my random topic jar. Now it's open and now it's the Ooh, moment. Exciting. <laughs> the first one. So tattoos and piercing. Um, okay. So I see your piercing, but do mm -hmm. you have also tattoos and other piercing? Um, yes, I have one more uh, belly button piercing. I have my ears pierced a little bit. Um, I have a couple tattoos. Yes, this one is, um, I should turn it around and do this. Yeah. See if someone gets it. Um, so yeah, I like Star Trek a lot. So that's why this one. Um, I have, uh, my first one was the Sonata Arctica logo. Okay. Um and um yeah that one needs to be touched up a little bit by now. Um I have a compass on my foot. I got a uh a smiley face or a sad face on my on my foot as well. And I have uh the berserk brand of sacrifice. I got that one recently as well on my uh what is this called? The the bone here. Uh on the Sternum. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Yes. So it's a, a bit lower. You can't see it. I did yeah. that on purpose. So I can hide it whenever I want to. Yeah. That's uh, it. When did you get your first one? Um, in 2010, I got my first one. And um, I thought the name of the, the tattoo place was cool. It's called the Hand of God. So okay. the, the the tattoo artist, his last name is God, so apparently. And um, uh, so the tattoo uh, parlor is called the Hand of God. And so I was touched by the Hand of God to get a tattoo, <laughs> the first one. You can say now this. <laughs> uh? <laughs> yeah. And there was one of those tattoos that were, was the, the most painful. Mm. I think probably the one on my foot because that was the, the the biggest one. Even though I have tiny feet, it's the biggest one I have, um, and it has some shading and coloring in it. So that took a bit longer, and um, the tattoo artist said, "Oh, let's take a break now." And I think that should not have happened um, because after that, it was very painful because the skin started to swell up a little bit, and the second part wasn't that much fun. Um, the rest, uh, well, the sad face was done in uh, like half a minute or something. So okay. that was fine. Uh, the Berserk logo and the, and the little Star Trek logo, they didn't take that long. Um, I mean, they were not without pain, but I was warned that it was going to be painful, especially the one on my sternum. And, and because of that, um, it was not as bad as I thought it would be. And um, we did a... Uh, practice like a, a breathing that every time she did another line it was like breathing out and that way it was more relaxed and it was yeah. fine yeah okay yeah I have just two tattoos so far I want more actually I want a mm -hmm. Artica, uh, uh sentence sentence here but mm -hmm. maybe maybe one day it's it's about money it's <laughs> And then I want from okay. another song uh, here. I have the idea. I have the, the the vision is clear. And then I want also to have uh, the the fun the fun metal metal pizza, uh, met, metal pizza thing. I don't want the logo itself, but I want the the horns up up and, yeah, and the have pizza to. slice yeah. and uh, i was thinking maybe i'm going to put one year and one year but i don't know i'm still thinking or maybe it's going to be on my leg i i don't i don't know because the other so well, you can start with one yeah and then continue with the next one i mean you don't have to do it at the same time yeah yeah that's true but yeah i i i think that uh i would like to have the this one is the the, the first one that I want, the one with Sonata Artica song, but yeah, I I, I wanted that too, and then I decided to go for the the ice logo instead. But yeah, I always wanted a line as well, and I was trying to remember what line it was, but I don't even remember the specific line. I just remember it was from Sing in Silence because I really love that song. Yeah, 
uh, the one that I want is from uh, Grave Image, and it's oh, very good I song. Can, I yes. can change a lot to make you cry. Yes. So yeah, that's, that's, that's that's something that uh, you know. With music, it's it's true. You just change one note, and you get the uh, in the minor key, and then I can make uh, people people can cry because of how emotional they get with a sad melody. So that's mm. that's something that uh, that always uh, I I liked about that sentence. That yeah yeah it's true. Mm. So that's that's something. <laughs> Yeah, it's um, I I like I know a couple of people that have lyrics of, of bands that they love and yeah, it's um, it it's more special I think than just a basic little picture. Yeah, it has more meaning. Yeah, uh, at least the what I have I have on my back two tattoos and they both have a meaning for me. Um, they are not the most beautiful tattoos that you can see, but I don't care. They are hey, there. You can see. Yeah, I cannot see them, and I think that one is really same It's been there for almost twenty years. So I think that it's not. I think it's here or it's here. I don't remember. Maybe it's here. Where where are? They? <laughs> I cannot <laughs> see. But yeah, I have, around a I have a tattoo on one of the side. <laughs> <laughs> that's great because i don't remember where it is and then I <laughs> on the lower back on the central lower back i have <laughs> another one bigger that it actually took almost five hours oh it was it was a long one and it was uh yeah at some point a bit painful but i was like yeah it's fine it's fine <laughs> And here I am complaining about a tiny foot tattoo that was a little bit painful. Uh, yeah, but yeah, I, think I still, the, I still would... on the back is not that painful, you know, uh, except uh, on the spine. Then, then when there was, he was doing this line on the spine. It was a bit like, mm, yeah, because it's bony, you know. <laughs> so on the other part, it was fine because there is more muscle mass, so. It's not mm. that, that big of an issue, but uh, I know that, for example, on the on the coastal part, it can be really painful. But then also depend on the person because we are all different, so we have so different true. kind of uh, yeah. of uh, of how we feel the pain and uh, how we react and what part is more painful. So, and I think also like what your condition is when you go there. Um, um, don't go in a hangover. Um, make sure you had enough sleep. Uh, it probably makes a lot of difference as well. Yeah. But yeah, the, the ribs. I would love to have a tattoo going from from up here all the way down to my hip. But yeah, you know what? And then I I want another tattoo that um I will get at some point, and um I do not know which location to pick because I want to have spots that I can easily cover up. Because yeah. I do not always want to see them, yeah, or other yeah. people to see them. Yeah, and then it depends. Uh, for example, I work in the healthcare. Even if uh, nowadays it's normal to see people with tattoos, I'm like, are all my clients fine with tattoos? Because sometimes I have uh, most of my clients are uh, over fifty, so I'm like. Uh, even if some of them have tattoos, so it's not a big a big of a deal. But uh, you know, I always think a bit uh, because maybe yeah, I am. Maybe I'm, I it's just because I'm from Italy, and in Italy it, it's always like a big deal. Even mm -hmm. if it's not anymore that much, but still, there is this uh, like you know, if someone has tattoo, is not a good person when uh, older people talk about it not younger of course <laughs> yeah I think it's a little bit the same in the Netherlands I used to work as a physiotherapist there and um, um, I remember I was told to take out my nose ring I didn't have this one yet um, and, and take most of these out um, and I didn't have any tattoos there so when I got the first one in my neck I, I just covered it up with my hair but um, yeah, it's a little bit different here in Finland. I think people are more used to seeing tattoos. I yeah. mean, they also are used to having 
people having any color of hair. So I think it's a bit more open minded here. And it's, so yeah, it's, it's that's uh, true. okay to have them here. But I'm still also in that um, thought that mm, I, I want to have them covered up. Um, yeah. Do you know yes, what you you saw that you were a physiotherapist and I'm a physiotherapist? <laughs> no way. Yeah, <laughs> I did not know that. No, well, I'm not anymore. But yeah. I used to be. I think my license by now has completely uh, gone because I haven't practiced for so many years. But okay. I used to be in the Netherlands. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, now I want to ask you because you told that you are a small frame person so how tall are you um, 157 <laughs> hey you are taller than me i'm 147 no yeah. okay <laughs> oh man that hardly ever happens i'm always the shortest one yeah you know a lot of people when they say you are shorter than me yes <laughs> so <laughs> you make people happy <laughs> So how how do you go about if you have to massage someone like big? Because I always had trouble with the tiny hands. Like a men's thighs are really big. If you have to like like massage their uh, quadriceps or something, like I always like, is this not that easy with these tiny hands? Yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't have a small small hands compared to I I have a bigger hands than people that are taller than me. I have longer, okay. longer finger, uh, uh, fingers ah. that are longer than than what maybe they are supposed to be. Uh, also, my feet are not that uh, really tiny; they are normal for, <laughs> but maybe a bit uh, longer for my my height. But uh, I don't have that much issues. Um, I just. Go ahead. Of course, I I didn't add that. Well, um, during one of my clinical practices, there was this um, young OK player, and he had some issues with the piriformis. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember my mentor told that told me, um, so go ahead and find the the piriformis. And under that big, <laughs> this big uh, gluteus maximus, it was like, uh, ow, <laughs> there is so much muscle there. <laughs> then it was just go with your elbow, you will find Oh, it. I was just going to say elbows. Yes, yeah. that is the way to go. It's the only way yeah. to do it, basically. Yeah. yeah. So, but I was trying to find the where it was, was you know in which yeah 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 you locate part, first with your fingers and then but it was like the no, no i cannot find that there there is so much uh, muscle mass <laughs> so that was fun. and also you get a little bit nervous i guess at that point like mm, hockey player mm. yeah i you think know, at least a, i would be with a people that uh, that that are doing uh, sports like professionally or almost professionally it's uh, it's different it's mm. different. You have uh, also when you do the test, it's different. So, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you you cannot do the, the normal test that you do with a regular person. And I think that uh, also when it comes to musicians, uh, it may be very diff different. Uh, if because you need to know how if if it's a professional musician and. Uh, mm how much he play, uh, what instrument, and uh, how, how many times he uh, go on the stage, and so on. So I would like to work with musicians uh, as a physiotherapist. Uh, but so far, I had just one, one guy, not professional, <laughs> just mm -hmm. as hobby guitar. But yeah, it was... I saw I always wanted to um, um, work with dancers and, and sports uh, like uh, athletes as well, but specifically dancers, because I used to, um, I'm also a dance teacher. So, okay. uh, so I was interested in doing that, but I, I never got to do it in the end, but that would be my dream because it's, um, 
I mean, I really liked that those people are so working so hard to to get to their goals and everything. So I would imagine that they also would do the exercises I'm giving uh, I'm giving them as homework and everything. Contrary to uh, other people who are like, yeah, okay, that hurt a little bit, so I'm not going to do it at home. Yeah, yeah, that's frustrating when someone comes to, to you and you give exercises. I, I had one man that he called that, uh, yeah, he doesn't want anymore to come because uh, the exercises make uh, his back painful. And I was like, yeah, it's normal because you you have never done anything. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's of course you are going to feel sore after. But mm -hmm. Yeah, that happens better. Too. But yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, you cannot. Uh, uh, I, I guess some people just want a massage, and that's about it. And um, if they have to work for it, then never mind. Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, uh, the manual therapy is part of. Of, of that but exercises and uh, you know that that is what make you uh, make make you back on uh, on your way to get better yes yeah i mean the the, the massages and everything else that is um, done passively is just to make it easier to do all, all mm -hmm. the exercises and everything it's yeah. not the other way around yeah true it's, that is only helping for a short while and uh, exercise is the stuff that helps you in the long run but yeah. if you don't want to get better then that's it i guess yeah it's up on people but let's take another another yes argument we went a bit uh, on a different argument but yes it was interesting. <laughs> so we have a uh, best moments so if you think about your life mm -hmm. there are those moments that are the highlight of your life what 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 could be a moment that you feel this is one of the best moments in my life i mean of course every uh, every good gig you go to is a highlight but oh um oh that's a really difficult question i Maybe one of them would be um, the moment that I uh, got on the boat uh, or maybe even better got off the boat in Helsinki, stepped on there uh, or like drove, drove on there with the car. I'm like, OK, so now I actually have moved to Finland. I think that one is probably a highlight. Um, and it was really nice that I got to share that moment with a really good friend. Uh, she came with me to help me out and we drove there together and um yeah i think that possibly is one of the 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 highlights probably yeah yeah that's nice uh, i also if i think yeah moving to finland uh, was one of the of the best moment but the best you know uh, when i realized that i'm going to move to finland that that was something Ooh, yeah that's my yeah that's maybe even a better one actually yes yeah. the moment that then you realized, move and it's great but the moment that you know that you are going to that now it's the time that's like blind mind-blowing you know um, yeah yeah that's definitely a good one too yeah. well i want to add it like a little bit a smaller highlight but still i had this um thing that i always wanted to do which would be a, a like swimming in the winter here in Finland, um, preferably with ice around, but that didn't happen really. But um, last week I went with uh, with uh, my best friend to do it in the center of Tampere. And that was really great. Take sauna and then run outside and quickly take one, well, don't take a dive, but step into the water carefully. And I always wanted to do that and it felt so good. So. Yeah. Yeah. that one is a one too yeah yeah and there to do are, it with uh you know, with such a good friend yeah that's that's important to share the the good moments with someone that that you care about so yes yeah yeah, yeah that's nice uh let's talk about pizza so do you oh, like yes. pizza uh, yes i do what's your favorite pizza 
Mm, um, I have, um, I think, two favorites. One would be more of a summer pizza and one would be more of a winter pizza. Uh, so for summer, I really like, a, like an Italian style pizza with, um, uh, what is it, with mozzarella and uh, um, uh, arugula and tomatoes on it yeah. and fresh garlic sprinkled on top. Um, and in the winters, I would go for pepperoni and pineapple on my pizza. Okay. So you are. So I think pineapple. that question is out already. But fresh pineapple, though. Okay. It has to be fresh pineapple. Yeah. So if it's from from a can, you are not. Not. Well, I would still take it, but it's just not as good. Once you have tasted fresh pineapple, like, there's no going back anymore. Yeah. You know, you are the second one that is saying ab about the fresh uh, pineapple thing. The first one was an Italian guy, so <laughs> it it was something different that an Italian is up to to pineapple on on pizza. So yeah, that's a, a surprise. <laughs> yeah, but there there are quite a few in uh, in my interviews that they admit that they eat, they like it. So I'm glad to hear it. Yeah, I really um I always liked uh, sweet and savory combined. So okay. no brainer that pineapple fits on a pizza for me. Yeah, yeah. But I do understand I do, other I don't people like, say that. But I don't like even, uh, you know, uh, in Italy there is this uh, uh, um, honey melon with uh, the prosciutto crudo around. And I don't mm -hmm. like that combo because Ooh, I do. For, for me it's fruit and uh, something else, salt. So for me it doesn't work, but it it comes on uh, the person taste. We are also different. Mm. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, I really like that combo, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I see. But let's get to the question that the previous guest mm -hmm. left for you. So the question is, uh, what is your favorite IKEA, Ikea item and why? Oh, well, <laughs> um, if you look in the background, there's these uh, white thingies over there where I put my CDs and DVDs and Blu-rays in and I think that would be my uh, number one probably okay. they don't make them anymore at least in Finland they're not sold anymore so I um, I'm now looking second hand to get some more of these to put my other CDs in but yeah okay good question so funny question we got the answer and now it's your turn to leave a question for the next hmm Okay, so I, I had difficulty coming up with a question like, mm, these are all stupid questions. But um, I wrote down, would you rather never listen to your favorite music again or um, never eat your favorite food again? That's a good one. A tricky one. <laughs> I'm, I'm very curious. Yeah, let's see what is going to be the answer. I still don't know who is going to be the next. I still have to contact, so everything is open. But uh, now we are at the end of this episode. Thank you so much for your time. It was a pleasure to talk with you, and we had a lot of things in common. So <laughs> that Clearly, was yes. <laughs> uh, would you like to say something to people that are watching or listening this episode of Metal Pizza? Um. Well, thank you for watching until the end and hear me ramble on. And um, uh, please contact me and don't be afraid if you would like to have uh, some clothes made to your size as well. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>